What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm going to be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. First off, I want to apologize in advance for back here. Basically what happened was someone had came in, ransacked the place, took every single juice that was on this wall. They didn't bother this wall or any of the mods. They just took everything from above the bike. you think that they would have tried to take the bike. They didn't. Just the juice. Priorities. Another Vupu product. How about that? So today we're going to be doing a review on the Pericles related indirectly to Heracles or Hercules. What is the name of the company that made the Heracles? The Sense, right? Sense is a company that has nothing to do with this at all. Now I'm going to tell you right off the jump that the post on this are from something else. I can't quite remember it. I know that the Bonza has kind of a, or the new Bonza has a reverse clamp where it brings it back up. There was also something else that did that. And I, I wanna say it was the OBS. I can't remember. Well, when I show you, you'll be able to tell me just because it's kind of unique. Vupu, I guess, is at this point now. They just did the rim fire and I wasn't the biggest fan of it. There was a lot of faults with it. There was a lot of problems, a lot of things that I probably would have never expected Vupu to create. Vupu at this point is really venturing into the RDA, RTA realm. They did do a couple RDAs a while back. It wasn't anything that's worth mentioning. I can't even remember the first RDA that they made. It wasn't the Rune, it was something else. Either way, we're here with a different RDA, which is, of course, all gold-plated. I'm not quite sure as to why any company, including Vupu, is gold-plating their decks. I already get what you're gonna say in the comments, that it affects voltage drop, it makes it better. No, no, just stop. Just, just please stop and sit down and realize what you're saying before you're saying what you're saying. Let me bring this down, show you everything inside of the box, put a build in, and let you know my final thoughts on the Vupu Pericles. Pericles. I got an idea. So I downloaded this app because I have a problem with some words. So I downloaded this app that basically pronounces everything for me. So if I don't know how to say something, I'm going to ask her and she's going to tell me. So for instance, this is pronounced by dictionary. Pericles. I said it right the first time. Related indirectly to Heracles or Hercules, but the French version. Let's flip it. Heracles, RDA, really nothing on the front side of this. On the top and bottom, nothing. On the flip side, you're gonna have all their social media, a little quick response reader. And then on the other side, you're gonna have a UPC and a scratch and sniff, and this is obviously gonna be Vupu, flavor and scented. Kind of an original or natural approach is what they're going for. I, however, when I scratch it, smell brand new car scent. On the back side of the box, really not a whole lot of information here. Just give that a free frame for you to read some of your bullet points about this i don't know what this is referencing right here maximum e-liquid capacity are they saying because of the tubes that they have on the bottom which are designed after the tsunami or even better the kennedy that this is going to be able to fit more juice possibly however it is bottom airflow and bottom airflow is typically known to leak especially when you have coils over the airflow like most people that build coils compatible with both squonk and usual pin <laughs> What's a usual pen? Warning on the bottom. Let's open it up. Here we go. There's the dripper. Go over that shortly. Underneath on the bottom. Then you get a silica gel packet on the bottom, which is going to be used to suck any of the moisture outside of the box. Always a good thing, especially when it's being imported from boats and ship. You know, you, you never know when the... the okay. A user manual of sort, which is going to give you a breakdown of the dripper and sort of how to put a build in it right here. Very, very small image. Then on the flip side, it tells you how to actually wick it up. I don't know why we need an instruction manual at this point. Inside one of your peripheral bags, you're going to get two coils and a big piece of Japanese cotton. This is something that we're seeing less and less of. I don't know if it's laziness or the way that they look at it is there's not much of a need to include this because no one's going to use it. They're going to use their own coils they're going to use their own cotton but it's a nice touch it's almost like they're promoting this for people that are just starting out vaping however the problem is is that this is dual airflow on the bottom and that's going to be very relevant in leaking then inside your peripheral pouch you're going to get an allen key a barbie screwdriver some extra post screws which are these really really long jammies and then another post screw which is the minuscule version you have two different variations of post screws inside the deck and then of course you get a squonk pen because the one that's in there by default is a studded five 10. Dripper itself is a little unique in shape, kind of reminds me of the Anglo that I did a review on. If you haven't seen that review, I'll post the link right there in the corner. 
airflow on the bottom, of course, you're going to see the gold plated deck because obviously the whole bottom of this is in fact gold plated. On the bottom of the dripper, Pericles, designed, designed by Vupu in California made in China. I would like to know where in fact the Vupu in California is. If someone could please leave a comment and just give me some kind of directional or map pinpoint to where Vupu has a headquarters or a base inside of California. And then on the side, made in China, of course. You have a flathead screw for your negative pin and then as you can see inside of there, it is studded. This whole fucking gold plating has got to stop. Oddly enough, on this deck, if you turn it all the way to the right, you close off both sides. If you close it all the way to the left, closes off both sides. Somewhere right in the middle is airflow. It's a little awkward. You'd think that they would just lock it in all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Drip tip on the top is going to be 810. Not a bad looking drip tip. Kind of chubby monkey. O-ring on the inside built into the top cap. And you can see that there is no dings, dents, burrs, spurs, or cowboy boots anywhere on the outside of this. Not bad machining at all. Inside the top cap, you'll see these lovely notches. But again, you saw me turn it. So I really don't know the purpose of them aside from just putting the top cap on correctly. However, the airflow is not going to be direct when you line those up. This whole post configuration has been done a thousand times. I can't remember what deck that is to where one of the sides, when you unscrew it, it brings this down. I know that there's been a couple, but there's one that's really ringing a bell. I think it's OBS. On the bottom, you have these tubes, which are located directly underneath the coils. And then of course it goes directly to the bottom there. Double O-ring situation, rubber, of course, not silicone, always a good thing. And then having your airflow like this raised up off the deck isn't necessarily a bad thing it does make it a little bit more reluctant to leak just because it's so high set however if you're just going to drip down the barrel and onto the coils usually the juice will roll off and then go down into these air flows a lot of people use the argument that bottom airflow give you the most amount of flavor i don't necessarily agree with that i just think it's a matter of redirecting the airflow so it's proper and then you'll get really good flavor flathead screws of course on the top which are something i friggin despise this is why i hate flatheads it's a matter of putting it in and then you got a finger bang Sally just to get this right. There you go. There is your threading. Not terrible whatsoever. The outside of each post has a very, very extensive screw, which goes all the way down to the bottom. And when you unscrew this, of course, it drops the clamp down. It's not going to be spring loaded. It's almost attached to the screw. So what they expect you to do is put one leg in here and then one leg up here and then obviously flip. The good thing with the post configuration like this, these screws are not related directly to these, meaning that you could tighten this down as much as you want not having to worry about this down here you'll even notice that there's little grippy jammies on this which is something that i thought bogan had implemented in his new design of his bonza 1.5 looks like they got to it before he did. I think plenty of people have saw that he had done this. Again, that might be the same thing on his original bonds. I can't quite remember. Looking at the post of this, the machining is absolutely terrible. You have lots of lines, lots of machine marks. And then on the other post, it doesn't look anywhere as bad as the other one does. Gold-plated screws, which are always a horrible idea. Then you have these tubes for your airflow, which are silver. This is like a drunk man's dripper. Let's put a build in it. Dual 28 core with 38 on the outside fuse clappings. Let's put it in.
that is the Pericles by Vupu. Let's bring it on the top. <clears throat> you get that when you talk and then the phlegm catches whatever you were saying and it sounds like you were gargling on some type of jizz or mayonnaise. You know what I'm talking about. Back on top with the Vaporesso Armor Pro and the Vupu Pericles RDA. Let me show you some vapor production we're working with 66 watts. It's not terrible. Here's the situation. When you get an RDA that has coils that are off center like that, what usually happens is in order for you to vape on these properly, you have to either A, squonk on them, and squonking on something that's bottom airflow is not gonna be in your best interest because it's gonna over capillary and then go down into those tubes. However, that's not saying it can't be done. The biggest problem is if you use this as a dripper like I am. In order for wicks to get totally wet and capillary action up, I have to wait. Because of the way that this is shaped, you can't really put Put your nozzle in and angle it towards a coil you have to drip it down the center and then hope and wait now if you vape like most people do that are using drippers you don't want to have to wait for that capillary action you just want to vape right away that's not going to be much of a possibility with this rda these are kind of things that I've veered away from. I don't like drippers where the coils are way out of touch with the airflow directly down the center. If I could just stop fucking burping, it would be great. I used to be one of those guys that would paint the coil. Literally, I would take the top off the 454, put juice all over the coils, and then put the top back on. A lot of wasted time, man. Basically, for a full day, it would take me about eight minutes in total of taking it off and putting it back on, taking it off and putting it back on. Drippers have become so well diverse that you can just do it right down the drip tip, but this, you start to veer away from that. The airflow on the bottom looks extremely vast on this, but I'm here to tell you that it's not. It's a loud one too. The reason why we have so much noise on this is because of the airflow chambers themselves. They're not as large as what they look like. Keep in mind that you may have all that airflow coming in from the side, but it's directed by those two tubes. And that airflow that you hear going through those ports and up through those tubes is gonna be a little bit loud. And I have the coils literally directly over the airflow like it, it can't be any more direct than that and they are little dainty jammies but they are fuse claptons they're just 2.5 versus 3. funny thing is a lot of people use 2.5 millimeter inner diameters i prefer on a dripper i'm going to use threes just right off the jump three millimeter and i'm good to go i don't want to say that this rda is a piece of shit because it's clearly not it's machined better than half the shit that comes out of china the only problem is the whole fucking deck including the screws are all gold plated the, the screws. I can't understand why people do that. I get the idea of taking a titanium screw and then burning it and making it blue. Like, I get it. That's nice. This doesn't look nice. So I've seen way worse machined outside RDAs. As far as internally, this is pretty shitty. That post has those layers like the machine marks that are on it. I'm not saying that this should fail quality assurance, but if that is their standard of what their decks are going to look like, I would definitely not recommend this to anybody. Why are they gold plating screws? Why are they gold plating decks anymore? Didn't that go away last year? And if we're back on it again, where this is something that we're implementing, I don't want any part of this. I don't. It doesn't provide more flavor. The thinness of how much gold plating they have does not affect voltage drop. I'm not even quite sure why anybody would buy this dripper over any other dripper that's on the market. I think the situation right now is a lot of people are buying reviewers products and reviewers make a lot of drippers. Vupu, on the other hand, contacted a bunch of reviewers asking them if they would do some type of collaboration with them. I think they did it in hopes of someone saying yes and then they build their name back up. I don't think anybody did because this is another device that Vupu made that has no name attached to it. So this is going to go under the rug like a majority of things that don't have reviewers names plastered on the side of it. I don't know if that's necessarily a negative thing because you're not missing out on anything if you were to buy this. The price point of this dripper is just like everything else, 25 to 30 beans across the board. You may find it on sale for 20 but I'm going to tell you like this, as far as a recommendation is concerned, 
one. The only way I'm going to recommend this, if you can find it between $10 to $15. If I was to rate this dripper on a 0 to 10, I'm going to give it a 3.54. There's absolutely nothing special with it. That post may be unique, but I'm pretty damn sure that I found 50 other drippers that I've done reviews on that I apologize, I can't remember, that have that same type of configuration. I was under the impression that Bonza 1, the original one, had a post like that, and then he added the little notches. But apparently, Vupu got a hold of it. And that's made by Vandy Vape. So do we begin with Vandy Vape and Vupu again? I guess Vupu got pissed off that Vandy Vape cloned their chips, so Vupu was like, we're gonna clone the Bonza. The only problem is the person that's attached to the Bonza. Vupu, you guys need to sit down. Seriously. <laughs> do something else. Call your company something else. Go buy one of these fly-by-night companies. Call yourself like the Jangleta crew or the Flip Flop Parade. Call yourself anything other than Vupu. I know the original Bonza was loosely based off the OBS. I want to say the Cirrus, but I don't think that's what it is. Maybe the Cheetah or something? Vupu is labeling this as top filling. Isn't every RDA top filling? Unless, of course, you have an RDA that fills from the side. Well, there's an invention for you. And then they're saying that it has anti-spitback. It doesn't have anti-spitback. It's got a fucking huge block in the center of it. You can't consider that anti-spitback. That's a post. That's what that is. Or posts. Plural. That's... That's not anti-spitback, man. Anti-spitback would be putting some type of grating or chicken wire fence on underneath the drip tip. That would be anti-spitback. The Rune RDA that they did, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. If you haven't seen a review for that, I'll post a link right there. I don't still use it. I used it just for the review and then that was it. However, that was a way better product than what this is. Again, it's not terrible. It's just nowhere near what it needs to be to be in competition with everything else that's on the market today. I definitely would not recommend this to anybody. I don't think anything is special with it. It does have a unique shape. It kind of looks like the tip of a dildo. So if that's your thing, then, you know, listen, you got a mech mod. You know what I'm talking about. Hmm? Very loud airflow. And I'm not even hitting it that hard. It's just loud. As far as flavor is concerned, yeah, I got flavor, but my calls are directly over it. Whether or not you'll get flavor is whether or not you buy this device, which I feel like nobody's going to do. So really, this review is totally irrelevant. doesn't even matter. I've kept it real. Have you? Jay's out.